Raising teenagers is hard. Understatement of the century. This is Mentor Select. Mentor Select. Parenting teens to be successful adults. Mentor Select serves parents who are raising teens. Every week, Derrich interviews leading experts that work with teens, educators, counselors, mentors, and authors to give you practical tips, strategies, and resources that you can incorporate immediately to better connect and understand your teen. All while parenting them to be successful adults, focusing on social and emotional development, something that's left out of the classroom, but not in ours. Be sure to subscribe, share, and rate. This is Mentor Select, and this is your host, Derrick Phillips. Parents, today you're in for a real treat. We have entrepreneur Kim Egan joining us today. She has a background in psychology and leadership, so I'm sure she's going to provide us a lot of great insight and, and tips today. How are you, Kim? I'm well, Derrick. Thank you so much for having me, and hello to all of you in the audience today. It's a pleasure. Happy you're joining us. So where are you joining us from? I live in Colorado, and it's bright blue sky today, nice and sunny, and um, I'm very fortunate to live in a beautiful place. Yeah, it is really beautiful. I love the mountains, and I'm sure there's not much snow on the mountaintops right now, though, is it? <laughs> Um, not much, although it's funny, this time of year, the top of the mountains got snow about two weeks ago. Holy So cow. <laughs> you, you never know in Colorado, um, and we often have hailstorms throughout the summer, so it can look like it's snowed. Wow, that is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I say you ne- never know. Cool. <laughs> well, Kim, you know, our, our audience is like parents who are raising teens, and that can, we know those can be some tough years sometimes with teenagers and understanding all the different phases they're going through in development. Before we get into the insights you can provide us, can you tell us more about your background? You bet. Um, So I've really spent about 30 years focused on individual performance, um, starting in the area of psychology, moving into performance in the workplace, helping business leaders as well as individual employees improve what we call soft skills. So things such as what coaching or feedback or from an individual standpoint, decision making, um, how to work with others. And I was involved from a training and development standpoint, not only creating programs um, to work with Um, managers and leaders and individual employees, but also delivered as well. So spent a number of time in the classroom teaching. And really over that time, I discovered that there were some common themes, no matter who I worked with, no matter what industry the person was in, what their age was, whether they were in their 20s um, or towards the end of their career. And I discovered a couple of things. One is that everyone is looking to improve. Everyone wants to be their best and everyone wants to be great. And the challenge is, how do we get there? Right. And over the last dozen years or so, I've been really thinking about what causes achievement and what leads to greatness. And the more I thought about it, the more I became inspired and the more I realized in particular, young people, teens and young adults are really searching for some of these skills and some of this information. Uh, When we're young, we um, often have a lot of hope and excitement. Um, We're excited about the future um, many times and we just don't know what to do. And I thought, gosh, you know, the things that I learned and even some of um, my older um, students that we learned sometimes through just life experience, I thought, well, how how can we share and teach some of these concepts uh, to our youth in order to help them maybe get a better start, uh, maybe overcome some of the barriers 
that a lot of times we all have as human beings. And it doesn't matter um, where we come from, uh, who we were born to, where we live, what we look like. There are some common struggles we all face. And, you know, certainly some, you know, have, you know, more challenges and obstacles to overcome than others. And yet, um, some of the same principles apply no matter what the circumstances may be. I'm happy you mentioned that because, like you said, no matter what the background or age or industry, there's a lot of common themes. And he broke it down to those everyone is looking to improve. That's one for sure. And yep. we, we all desire to be great, no doubt about it. But I guess a good place for us to start is with the, the soft skills. I know that's an area that a lot of teenagers struggle with, really developing those soft skills. What are some, just starting with, what are some ways that parents can help teens develop those soft skills? Yeah, I think um, when I think about teenagers and for um, those parents in the audience, I currently have a teenager. Uh, my daughter is 15 and she will be starting her sophomore year of high school next year. Awesome. First hand experience. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I was telling Derek uh, before we started today that she just got her permit. Um, so learning how to drive. So navigating all sorts of things. <laughs> um, the other thing that I'm experiencing, which apparently I've seen some articles on during um, this COVID-19 um, time is that so many teenagers out there are becoming what uh, one one termed in an article headline um, vampires and that they mm. stay up till all hours. Um, and um, it's not uncommon to hear her rustling at three in the morning. <laughs> and yeah. my husband and I are just beside ourselves. We just <laughs> think it's not normal. And, and um, we, we have to do something. And then a different and, sleep schedule. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I, in this article, one father said that it, he felt like there was a raccoon in the house <laughs> when he came down in the morning and saw all the things that his son had been doing. <laughs> um, you know, so it's um, definitely a, a different time. Your your child is transitioning from being a young child into a young adult, um, ready to um, really go out and uh, wants wants more freedom, um, wants to be able to do more for him or herself, um, and often doesn't think parenting is required. And yet, we all know having. Um, reflected back to our teens and, and even early 20s, how much guidance we still need. And so as parents, that's our challenge into how do we um, really help our children uh, navigate that process from teen to young adult and most importantly, successful young adult and then adult. Right, right. Yes, it's very important. When you think of some of those, I guess, kind of vital life skills that teens need to navigate from uh, being a teen to a successful young adult, what comes to mind? Yeah, I think um, one of the key concepts is around responsibility. And, you know, this is a, a concept, I think, for all of us, but especially for um, teens and young adults. And that is to understand that at the end of the day, we own responsibility for our words and our actions and what we achieve. Um, no one is going to really do it for us. Now, when we're young, we have, especially when we're real little, you know, it's the role of our parents to support us and to guide us and to do quite a bit for us. And then as we transition into teenhood and then young adulthood, you know, we need to take on more responsibility. And it's really understanding what we have control over. Um, and I think it can be a tough concept for teens to grapple with because they, in some ways, haven't had to do as much. And yet, when um, teens and young adults um, have what's called a strong internal locus of control, and what that means is that the kids who believe that they can control what happens 
Um, and, and, and I say that within reason. Certainly there are some guidelines and some rules both in your house and, and at school and, and, and such that um, we don't get con to control at that age. But I'm really referring to the things such as effort, um, something such as um, um, a reaction to a situation, whether it's done with anger or kindness, um, right. um, whether or not we own up to mistakes, you know, that's a tough one. Um, we don't want to make mistakes. And a lot of times we feel really bad about doing things wrong and we don't know what to do. Um, but those kids who are able to understand to say, I made a mistake, it's my responsibility. Let's just take uh, an example, maybe a, a test in school. Uh, maybe a, the um, teen didn't get the grade um, that he wanted. Well, is it the teacher's fault? Is it his parents' fault? Is it the, is it the friend who distracted him? Or does the teen look in the mirror and say, I own this. Right. You know, I, um, one maybe didn't study enough. Um, maybe I didn't understand a concept and just sat in the classroom for a few weeks being confused and never asked for clarification. Right. Um, so it's encouraging the teens to be an advocate for him or herself. Um, if you don't understand something, you know, go up and ask your teacher after class. Um, if you have the opportunity to send an email, many students do, um, maybe that's a way to communicate with a teacher. You know, how can you reach out and get what you need? Um, and taking real responsibility for the outcomes. Um, yeah. Even in, go ahead. Yeah, I was about to say, I just think that's such an incredibly important concept. And just in society, I believe a lot of teens and adults, everyone have issues with just taking accountability and owning up to, to their mistakes. And I was just going to ask, like, what are some ways that parents can help teens really grasp that concept and make them feel comfortable by saying, okay, I messed up. I made a mistake. I'm owning this. Is it, is it something that yeah. parents can really do to help them really grasp that and feel more comfortable with taking accountability and not feeling the need to be perfect? You bet. Um, first of all, I think that um, helping a child know that it's okay to not be perfect. You know, hey, this didn't go as well as you wanted to. Um, you know, we're all human. Nobody's going to do everything right all the time. Um, the key is, can you learn from the situation and try to do better next time? Right. Um, I think you're smart. I love you. You're capable. And let's then learn from this. Yeah. Um, the second thing to really um, do is ask some questions. Um, if you um, can see, you know, that your um, son or daughter is maybe, uh, I'll use that example of a subject at school struggling, right. um, you can ask, you know, are you confused about something? It's okay. You know, yeah, I really can't get, you know, this geometry concept. Well, um, have you talked to your teacher? Well, no. Okay. You know, how can you do that? You know, it's up to you. Um, it's okay that you don't understand, but it's up to you to search out the solution to create understanding. Right. Um, so it's really helping the child know it's in your control. And as much as I wish that I, I could, I, so for example, I can't help my daughter with the math. Um, so as much as I would love to be able to sit down and teach her and help her, I cannot do that. Um, that uh, helping her with math ended a long time ago. Um, I'm embarrassed to say either. how many years ago, but it, it stopped a while ago. Um, so all I can do is encourage her and tell her, you know, it's your responsibility. You need to get the information and the coaching you need to be successful. Yeah. And, and 
And that way you're, as I say, you're empowering them. And you essentially, you can't do it for them, but you're guiding them to the solution. I like that a lot. That's, that's right. You know, it's, it's really helping them know, you know, when things go wrong, it's a, it's a balance, right? You don't want to shame your child and think um, he or she is constantly doing things wrong, but you also want to help your child understand um, you have control over a lot of situations. Um, and sometimes I will help my daughter understand where she has control and where she does not. Okay. Um, so, um, oh goodness. Um, that brings up a good point. Yeah. I go guess ahead. if you give an example as far as some areas where a 15 year old daughter doesn't have control when you lay that out for her, you know, she doesn't have control over, um, how a teacher decides to, um, uh, teach a concept or, um, even grade assignments. Okay. Um, but she does have control over um, understanding the teacher's process. Ah, so yeah. there are times where um, I have said, well, you need to ask your teacher um, to help clarify what you need to do. Um, because, you know, she can't control the grading. Um, she can't control um, what the test is going to look like, but she can control um, building her knowledge and information about the um, the process. Yeah, um, same thing example. with um, judging. Um, my daughter is a cellist, and uh, cool. um, she um, often has auditions, and she can't. Um, control who the judges are. She can't control um, maybe their particular bias for uh, typical, t- uh, a type of uh, music that they prefer. Right. So we're always dealing with human beings. Exactly. And as much as we'd like to, especially as children and as teens, we think adults somehow do it right all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course we don't, right. um, but they don't know that. Yeah. So, you know, she could be playing a piece and there could be a judge that, you know, maybe because he had to play it when he was a kid and he didn't like it and now <laughs> she's playing it. And that, that bias is going to influence right. on how she's judged. But exactly. what she can control is her mm-hmm. preparation. Right. Um, she can control her presentation she can control um, how she interacts in terms of, um, you know, uh, how she greets the judges, thanks them for their time, and 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 says, you know, um, I appreciate your your listening and your time today. So she can control all those things, um, and then how the judges go from there. That's some of that's going to be out of her control. Yeah. Um, so it's really learning, um, you know, where we can control things and where we can't. Yeah. And it's not easy and it's hard <laughs> for us as adults. Exactly. Yeah, um, exactly. But if that's a skill as a parent, we can really uh, point out, um, encourage, and even simple language such as what can you control and what can't you control in this situation. Yeah. That's a very simple strategy. It's very simple language. And you can build that culture in your home right? with your children. I mean, it could be at the dinner table, you know, and if somebody, anybody in the family is complaining, you can have a culture in your family that everyone says, well, what could you control and what couldn't you control in that situation? I love and, that. <laughs> and create that dialogue. Right. Um, right. And that's that's building a culture and a skill in your home where it's safe to talk about this was in my control and maybe we don't do a good job. Like I, this is in my control and I just didn't do enough. And I right. know that. Um, but mm-hmm. then we can also give permission to sometimes be angry at the things that we don't have control over. And that's okay, too. Okay. Yeah. I think for me, yeah, that's, that's something where I had to grasp because 
it allows me to keep my stress level lower than if I was focused on things that were out of my control. Because I focus on things I can control, then okay, I know exactly what I need to do. And if I don't do it, hey, I only have my self to blame. But if I'm stressing over things that's out of my control, like you mentioned, the judging, then that's kind of counterproductive, I believe. It's, it's, yeah. There's nothing I can do about it. So it's something my, my grandmother used to always say that I think helped me grasp that concept. She said, don't, don't cry over spilled milk. And yes. that, uh, that's something I always think about still. Like, hey, if it, whatever is done is done or it's out of right. my control, I can't control it. But yeah, I know a lot of people struggle with that. They stress so much over things yeah. they have no control over. Yeah. Yes. And if your child plays sports, um, in almost any sport, we can probably come up with the, the examples. Um, if your child plays a team sport, um, I'm sure you've seen some of your child's teammates um, you know, maybe the judge made a call and, and even parents on the sidelines. I've seen that. My daughter used to play soccer. You know, we get we get all riled up because we don't <laughs> like what the linesmen did. Yeah. Um, studies have found that the kids who, again, have that internal locus of control and that the outcome of the event, whether it's a game or an individual you know, um, performance, let's say like, um, like a sprint in a track meet, um, those who don't blame others, the coaches, the refs, the linesmen, um, the timer, et cetera, right. the location, you know, the, <laughs> the grass was uneven, <laughs> it was cold. Yeah. Um, the kids who look at themselves and say, I could have run faster. Um, I could have hustled to the ball more. They're the ones who have a greater level of success um, in all areas of life. Absolutely. Not just on the, not just on the field. It certainly impacts um, their, their athletic performance, but you will see that carry over into academic performance. You will see it carry over into um, the pursuit and the commitment for whatever is chosen um, as far as a line of, of work or, or even if it's just a part-time job um, while you're going to school, all those things, it really does make a big difference. Um, and yeah. so that's another place to really talk as parents. Um, if your child does any sort of um, performance activity, whether it's a sport, whether it's a musical instrument, um, you know, any hobby really, Right. I mean, you you could, you know, have a kid who loves to um, just stay home and build things from cardboard boxes. I, my nephew does that. He takes any supply he can in the house and just builds, you know, so it's a matter of, you know, is it is it material's fault in my nephew's case if things don't go well um, or is it is it his effort and and what he could do differently? Yeah. Um, so, so the more we can point that out as parents in a um, supportive way, um, we're really teaching a life skill that um, grows with us right. into adulthood that we can then apply to anything we do. I mean, mm-hmm. you can you can really talk about how this um, will impact our relationships, um, you know, future relationships. Um, friendships, um, work everything. environments, it all really aspects does. of our life. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's so that's true. right. It's a like, gift you can give your child. It truly is a gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Certainly, and Kim, I like you mentioned about just as parents, kind of developing or creating that, building that culture at home. And I think too, part of that culture is as parents being transparent. And letting our kids know that, hey, we're not perfect. We've made mistakes. And I think that kind of helps them as well feel more comfortable not feeling the need to be perfect and just let them know it is okay to make mistakes. And we're yeah. going to, and also you mentioned about how what you can, what you can control is your preparation. That is so true because I hear a lot of athletes or successful people, especially in situations where they're being judged, is like, hey, take it out of the judge's hands Take as much as possible. Yes. Take it out of the teacher's hands. And that's going to come down to preparation. It comes all the way yes. back down to accountability. <laughs> so yeah. that is a, such an incredible 
uh, this concept that is yeah, so yeah. important. When my daughter had her first, I was going to say major audition, and she was very, very nervous. And um, she, her nerves got the better of her in that situation, and she didn't play very well. And about a day or so later, you know, she had a kind of process. She came to me and she said, I didn't do well. I was so nervous. I was shaking. What do I do? And I said, the first thing for any performance, and that goes for sport performance, that goes for giving me a, a presentation in your class, in your English classroom, in your sophomore year of high school. Um, anything that you need to do a test, the key, the first and foremost, as you said, Derek, is preparation. I said, if you don't prepare, um, your nerves are going to be out of control because you know you're not ready. And I said, I personally have done both in my life. I can distinctly remember being in the classroom. Um, I had a presentation to give. I wasn't prepared. I was so nervous. I didn't speak for minutes. <laughs> wow. And I can still too. <laughs> think back to that situation and the, the embarrassment of it. And I didn't do the work to get ready. And then, of course, my career took, you know, took a turn in that I was presenting and training and teaching quite often. And I found the days that I really did well were the days that I was talking about and presenting content that I understood, that I knew well, and that I had studied and could stand up there with confidence. Um, right. And, you know, so my daughter You're and I. Years old, man. Yeah, <laughs> we talked about that. Um, and then you can even really talk with your child about that. Even when it's, um, even if they have a part-time job somewhere, you know, what do they need to do to prepare to go into that job for that day? You know, how do they need to be dressed? Um, make sure that their hair is brushed and, and as well as their teeth. Um, right. <laughs> you Good know, hygiene. Just, what, what do you need they... to do to prepare to perform at your job today? And, 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 the, and your teen may say, mom, you know, I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just flipping burgers at the local mm -hmm. joint. It mm -hmm. matters. You know, yeah. everything we do matters and it builds skills um, and it builds habits. Right. Um, habits and, and, and those habits of the work you're doing now is important. And you know, you be the, be be the best burger flipper. There. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, and that's what then also leads to future success. You know, kids don't Certainly. know it now. They might just be flipping burgers. But the reality is, is that the kid that goes in holds his head up high, is um, um, respectful on time, right. um, dedicated, does a great job while he's there. People notice, and that's Absolutely. where opportunity comes. Yeah. Opportunity um, is out there, but more often mm -hmm. than not, we have to create the chances for opportunity to come our way. And that's yeah. a message that I would love for teens and young adults to hear. You mm -hmm. know, you just can't sit there. And expect things just to fall just fall out the sky. Exactly. You're not doing nothing. It does <laughs> you have not to be happen. <laughs> you have to put effort in. So when you look at you look at uh, the kid who sits next to you in the classroom, oh, he's so lucky. You know, he he got this op you know opportunity at work. Well, it's not luck. You know, there's I think there's very little luck in life. I think what is right. determined or what is identified as luck is somebody who was prepared and ready for an opportunity that came his or her way yep. and was doing actions to create opportunities. I, I understand um, there are different levels of challenges to create those opportunities. Um, some may have an easier time in creating opportunities than others. Um, and that is definitely true. Um, and yet opportunity is still possible. 
we yep. can still and and Derek, your story. Um, I think that's something that you uh, speak of quite frequently is Absolutely. terms of um, no matter what circumstance you may be in, you can create opportunity. It might not be easy. Yeah. Um, it's typically not. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Not at all. It's there. It's, <laughs> opportunity is uh, there. But, you, but it, it can be. And that's it's full circle back around to that responsibility. And yep. we have. Um, tremendous amount of control over how we can create opportunities. And if that's a message you can continue um, to help your team understand, um, even if he or she is um, struggling in, in a lot of different ways, that message um, will make a difference. Keep pointing things out. Keep showing your team, you know, gosh, you know what? You worked really hard on this and this was the result. Well done. See yeah. what happens when you apply the effort. See what happens when you take control and keep yeah. pointing yeah. out what he or she is doing well. That's so important. Absolutely. Not just the bad things. They reinforce the, the good things. So That's just right. Just spotlight when they do something wrong. That's yeah, very important. Now, in terms of so what the year 2020 has been quite the roller coaster for everyone in the whole world, yeah. but especially has hit teenagers extremely hard with just schools being closed, stay at home orders, yes. all of that. I guess, how are you seeing teens uh, really just dealing with all of the, the crisis we've been hit with? Yeah, I think um, first and foremost, I uh, just have a lot of empathy for um, the teens. Uh, this is a time in their life where um, being out and about and exploring and doing is usually quite high, you know, as we think about uh, oh, different yeah, phases that, in our life. They were all revolve around that. Yes. <laughs> <You're social. laughs> yes. Uh, as we get older, stay home doesn't, and you know, not being out late doesn't uh, matter as much, but you know, right. when, when you're young, it's really important. And, um, you know, I think first just, almost empathizing with your teams and really just acknowledging, uh, you know, I'm sorry, this is tough. And I think it's um, especially hard when, um, you know, the, obviously there are some teams who um, may have relied on a part-time job and they don't have that now. And so the loss of the income is difficult. Um, but I also think for some teams, you know, their, their loss, because there is a loss here, um, gets lost in um, some of the larger, bigger um, losses that have occurred in society. Yeah, Businesses it, closing. Gets, gets downplayed. Yes. Uh, yes. And so really um, honoring that where they are in their life, this is a big loss. Um, so I think first and foremost, just acknowledging um, and, and, and just giving some words to, I know this is hard and this is, um, I'm sad for you and I'm, I'm sorry. Um, and then, and then it's a matter of, um, trying to create strategies for, you know, um, depending on your child, what really is, is important for your child at, at this stage of the game. And what I mean by that is, um, some really, um, rely heavily on social engagement. Um, others, you know, are, are kind of okay. You know, they're, you know, they don't, they don't need to be with a huge group. Um, they don't right. need to be around a ton of kids. Um, others, um, it's the sports issue and it's the loss of, you know, being able to practice and play with the team. Um, so yeah, first, part of their identity. Yeah. I mean, so a lot of times being athletes. Yeah. yeah. So it's first understanding, you know, what, what does your particular child need most? Um, and then um, it's identifying, well, how can we make some of this happen in some way? Um, I, I know with the social aspect, um, the technology has certainly helped. Um, you know, lots of video, FaceTiming calls, um, right. you know, that at least has given, I think, some element it's not the same, of course. Um, you know, with the with the loss of a sport, is there a way to get out and practice? 
Um, it seems that right now, at least um, a number of the restrictions are lifting. So even if a team is not back together, um, you know, could your team, could your um, child meet up with one or two teammates and toss yeah. the ball around? Um, I understand, you know, depending on where you live, um, the restrictions are different. I also understand that the uh, situation on the ground is a little bit different. Some areas are heavy, more heavily hit than others. Um, so it's a matter of what are you comfortable with as a parent, um, but how can you best um, meet some of those particular needs that are lost for, for your child, um, depending yeah. on what's most valuable and, and, and what your team needs. Yeah, I think that's a great approach. And what you said is I just hope parents really grasp it in terms of acknowledging and empathizing and understanding that, hey, this this is a loss for them. Yeah. A lot of teens in this phase of their life, so, being social is so important. And I know as parents, we're past that phase and we're we're, we're fur being at home and comfortable on the couch. Right. So if we think back to our teen years, it was no, we got to yes. be out with our friends, having fun. Yeah. So you're right. I think I think. Parent, a lot of times parents are maybe downplay what's going on with their teens. Yeah. And, ah, it's not that serious. It's bigger issues. Right. In the world, we have bigger but, issues. Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> yeah, we're not sure exactly. how to pay the rent or the mortgage this month. Right. 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 So, so then the child gets diminished <laughs> and feels bad for missing friends because yeah. it's, it's certainly, you know, that's not as bad as, you know, not being able to pay the bills and yet there's still right. a loss. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so it's that's stressful, especially, you know, for families where um, this took a bigger toll, you know, um, you know, I, I'm I'm worried about much bigger issues than my my daughter, let's say, you know, seeing friends. Um, so if you can, in a moment or two, um, take a step back and provide some empathy. Um, I realize that it can be hard depending on your situation, but um, that would go a long way. Yeah, great advice. Fantastic. Well, Kim, you've given us a lot of great advice and just practical tips and strategies that parents can apply today that just really help um, open those lines of communication, strengthen that connection with their teens and just help their teens navigate just being to adulthood to be hopefully successful adults. And that's well functioning with those life skills and yeah. <laughs> soft skills that they need to be successful. That's right. But as we're ready to close up this, uh, wrap up this interview, Kim, would you have any closing words of advice or parting words of advice for the parents you want to leave them with? Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity, Derek. It's been a pleasure to be with you. Um, and, you know, thank you to you parents who are listening. But I appreciate your time and it is valuable. Um, but the fact that you're also listening says a lot. It says that you yeah. care and that you want to do what you can to help your child succeed in life. And that right off the bat is going to be one of your largest and biggest advantages. Um, and just encourage you to work on showing some of that uh, empathy during this time for your child. Um, but more than anything else, um, you know, continue to reinforce the message that um, your child's success and, and achieving what he or she wants in life, um, no matter right. what that may or may not be, really comes down to your team. Um, you will be there to support and you can help and guide, but you can't, at the end of the day, do it for him or her. Um, they have to do it for themselves and, you know, continue to point out how um, when they do take control, when they do take responsibility and um, put the effort and the hard work in, point out the great things that they're able to do and achieve, even if it's small, you know, they have to start somewhere. So small little efforts that make a small little result, point it out, tell them that you're proud. Um, and remind them that it was them who created that small success. Yeah, it goes a long way. Celebrate all those milestones, achievements, no matter how small. That's, that is fantastic. Well, great. Well, well, Kim, how can listeners get in contact with you if they want to learn more? 
Yes, the best place to contact me would be to visit my website, and that is um, www.kimegan, K-I-M-E-G-A-N.com. And you'll learn about an upcoming uh, book project that I have, um, as well as um, I have a blog. And then certainly uh, feel free to email me. Um, would love to hear from you. And if you have any questions, um, please send them along. Um, I'd be more than happy um, to get back. So thank you. Fantastic. And yeah, I had an opportunity to check out your website and your, your blog. I see you have some really cool articles. Before we let you go, what's one of your most popular article blog articles to date? Um, I think it's the one around... Um, achievement and, okay. you know, really focusing in on um, what does it take to achieve um, for, for anybody at any stage of the, the game. Although I will say that my um, upcoming book project is focused on um, teens and young adults and, and really oh, helping cool. to encourage them um, to uh, apply some of the um, great foundational principles that support achievement and success and how can they build those into how they um, interact and work with others. Awesome. Well, I know you're in the, you finished your manuscript and you're in the process of looking for a publisher. So good luck with that. And certainly looking forward to reading your book and have to have you back on once you get to that stage. We talk more about your book. That sounds great, Derek. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Mentor Select. Mentor Select. Parenting teens to be successful adults. Hosted by Dare Rich Phillips. Raising teenagers is hard. Understatement of the century. We get it. That's why Dare Rich interviews leading experts that work with teens, educators, counselors, mentors, and authors to give you practical tips, strategies, and resources that you can incorporate immediately to better connect and understand your teen. That's why we do the show. Be sure to share Mentor Select with other parents of teens. Follow us on social media at Mentor Select to stay up to date on the latest tips, strategies, and resources for parenting teens. Send your questions and comments to Derrich at MentorSelect.com. Tune in every Wednesday for new episodes. Till next time, this is Mentor Select.